Burgenland, the most eastern province in Austria and home to the country's largest lake, Lake Neusiedler. A region filled with small wine towns and farms. The sunniest state in Austria. Ideal for the winelands and vegetables that flourish here, especially the tomato, known here as the Paradeiser. Burgenland is famous for its tomato and vegetable dishes. Margarete Triebaume makes sure fresh vegetables are served every day, all from her own garden. It's about diversity, not simplicity. She and fellow tomato lover Annette Hoffmann nurture tomatoes of all shapes, sizes and colours. What is fascinating about the range of varieties is always discovering the new tastes and being taken by surprise. Margareta's sons now run the family vineyard, which has allowed the winemaker to pursue her hobbies over the last two years. Every morning, she cycles along the lake to her vegetable garden. Here, she has everything she needs and is constantly inspired. One thousand five hundred square meters of vegetable paradise, where vineyards used to grow. I start harvesting at the top and go into the vegetable garden four, five times and fill my basket to the brim. That takes three quarters of an hour. Every time there's a surprise that makes you happy. It's especially the tomatoes that surprise her every day. She's been growing rare varieties, a few new ones every year. This is a travel tomato. It's called that because you can break off the segments without a knife. So it's called the travel tomato. You can break off all these bits without harming it. Not quite ripe yet. If you have your own vegetable garden, you never have to worry about what to cook the next day. You just go and see what's ripe, and that's what's for dinner. From May, it's harvest time, and you never go home empty-handed. Margareta has four children, and all are farmers. Two sons run the vineyard, the twelfth generation in the family to do so, and are making their own mark, like the grazing sheep that now help out on the wine hills. Today, braised lamb is on the menu. First, she tends to the soup with lamb bones and lots of fresh vegetables. Seasoned with peppercorns, bay leaves and rock salt from the Austrian Alps. The lamb shank is braised, something between frying and stewing. When the soup is heated, the meat begins to fry and goes brown. To make it soft, soup is added. In this case, lamb soup. Lamb soup. 
The vegetables are used straight from the garden. No need for a rinse. Is this sauber? It's already clean. Oder? Isn't it? This was not sauber. If I wash it, there'll be so much water that it will boil cook and not fry. Fried summer vegetables are added to the lamb. Different types of turnip and beetroot. All from her ever-expanding garden. You eat something somewhere, in the restaurant or at the market, and it tastes good, and you want it, so you buy the seeds. It's about diversity, not simplicity. We enjoy eating meat, but we have cut down and eat more vegetables. It was our son Herbert's suggestion. Outside on the wine hills, Gerhard has reached the vines with his sheep. The grazing animals have their work cut out for them. They eat the lower leaves, cleaning the vines, and their dung fertilizes the plants. They don't eat the grapes, just the leaves. And so they do our work to remove foliage. They start with the sprouting ones low down, and then they go on and on, and they really start to stretch when there's nothing interesting left and the lower leaves are gone. Sheep are always efficient. They don't reach further than they have to, allowing the sun and light to get to the grapes. We take a look every few days, and once it's good, we move on. They developed the idea from traditional farming knowledge. This is probably the most developed project in the German-speaking region. Margareta has a small visitor in her kitchen today. Parsnip cabbage, carrot, tomato. On her grandmother's lap, Ronya learns the vegetable ABC nice and early. I have two daughters-in-law who eat with us. I cook three days a week, and on the other days, a daughter-in-law cooks. I have the advantage that I can always cook what I feel like. I take that privilege. Selfish or what? <laughs> Margareta only seasons the vegetables with salt, pepper and a little oil. Grated uh, parmesan and flour go over to soak up the vegetable juice. The parmesan adds flavour at the end and starts frying much earlier. Two tablespoons of oil are enough. There's just one thing missing from the colourful mixture. The paradisa are fried separately. If I add them to the vegetables now, there would be too much water and no roasting aroma. So the tomatoes are done separately, in a very hot pan, always. Salt, pepper and a little sugar. Sugar caramelizes right at the start. And, at the end, I add a shot of balsamic. This game of sweet and sour is something wonderful. I didn't invent it. I saw it done somewhere. <laughs> Doesn't that look convincing? The roast vegetables are now turned and tossed, so the upper side gets charred as well. I like cooking. It's not a chore for me. 
Today, the daughters-in-law are doing the serving. <coughs> Dinner is often enjoyed outside on the warm summer evenings in Burgenland. As you can see, we don't just eat meat, but also vegetables. 50-50. Margareta's passion for vegetable dishes has convinced her husband Ernst and the rest of the family. The family courtyard home lies in the middle of the small wine town Rust, right by the Neusiedler Lake. Early the next morning, Herbert and Gerhard are already on the vineyard with their sheep, on the way to the next hill and some more natural pruning. Margareta is enjoying the time to herself. This is my special pleasure. I always think of the song, the freedom must be boundless when one swims. Especially early in the mornings, there's no one here. You feel like the lake belongs to you alone. Ever since her sons took over the farm, Margareta has had more time to pursue her hobbies. Today, she's visiting her friend Annette. We met at a vegetable course about rare varieties, old types, seed proliferation, and there were great ideas there. We found we had a solid base for great conversation with each other. South of Neusiedler Lake, Burgenland becomes more hilly, dotted with small farms and orchards. Annette and Ingolf Hoffmann's farm is tucked away in the rural landscape. Hey, hello, Margarete. Yes, hey. Grüß dich. Servus. <laughs> they haven't seen each other for a year. I brought a little something from the home and the garden. They're huge eggs. I call it the red zebra. It's a firm tomato. It's good for filling, and so I brought it along. I thought you might not know it. I'll take some seeds from it straight away. <laughs> A few years ago, the Hoffmans woke a wild and barren piece of land from its beauty sleep. Annette worked as an architect in Germany. In Burgenland, she now farms four hectares of land with her husband. The newest addition is the large greenhouse for the tomatoes. That looks nice, the red apron. It goes very well. You don't see the tomato stains. <laughs> Annette has planted about 35 different types of tomato, especially old and rare varieties. These are the black Indian ones. It really is my favorite tomato. The aroma is so unique. Please gotta have some seeds. The black Indian is perfect for salads. These heart tomatoes really are the nicest hearts that I know. So well proportioned. I planted them last year, and because I like them so much, I offered that they could be used for the Noah's Ark handbook. Annette got her first seeds from a seed bank called Noah's Ark. Now she herself is a collector for the initiative that is dedicated to saving old crop plants. 
It already Didn't smells of tomato. <laughs> Very good. That's the pineapple, look. I want to take some seeds from it today. It's a very interesting variety. It's very yellow, and when you cut it open, there's a red marbled effect inside. Looking at all of this is making my mouth water. A summer without tomatoes is impossible. Unthinkable. Yeah. <laughs> The ladies get to work and set about their tasks. Margareta cuts the tomatoes for the drying machine and Annette tends to the seeds. When the tomato season starts, you finally have clean hands again as a gardener. Is it the same for you? Exactly. We've been working with tomatoes all day and our hands are nice and clean. There's something in the tomatoes and the rough seeds, like little scrubbers. Extracting tomato seeds is hard work. It's important that tomatoes are nice and ripe and the seeds are removed and then covered and left to stand for a few days in a relatively warm temperature so they can ferment. Some seeds from a different batch are ready for cleaning after three days in the jar. This is the mass of tomato seeds that has been fermenting for three days. The flesh is now pretty soluble and can be washed off the seeds more easily. The stirring brings the rotten tomato flesh to the surface as it's lighter. The good seeds, the ones which we want to settle at the bottom. The process is repeated several times until you have the feeling that you've gotten the seeds as clean as you can. Hundreds of old tomato varieties were threatened by industrial farming, but thanks to the work of people like Annette and Margareta, they're now being preserved. The old types are so important to me. People like us ensure the seeds are preserved and passed on. The industry isn't doing that. They're just interested in selling their hybrids. You can't do something like this with them. And another tomato variety's existence is ensured. In the supermarket, almost only so-called hybrids are being sold new breeds that you cannot reproduce yourself. Annette's air-dried seeds can be used by other gardeners and passed on. Margareta is preparing the tomatoes for the dryer. They should all be the same, around half a centimeter. When you have a much thicker slice, you can't dry it at the same time. The salt is there to pull the water out of the tomato, making them easier to dry all the way through. And you can't season the tomato once it's dry. The dry tomatoes from Annette's garden are so popular that she's had to buy a professional drying machine. For smaller quantities, you can just use the oven at home. After 24 hours in the dryer, the tomatoes are bone dry, and now I bring them back to life. Annette likes to cook with dry tomatoes, even if the garden is filled with fresh ones. She heats a little white wine with balsamic and seasons it with rosemary, bay leaves and fresh garlic. The dry tomatoes are briefly cooked in the mixture until they're soft. We also really like to eat the dried tomatoes in the summer because they have such a concentrated tomato aroma without the water. It's completely different to fresh tomatoes. The more diverse the varieties used, the more different flavors there are to enjoy. 
olive oil. Olive oil is just a part of the good taste when it comes to tomatoes, but it's important to first soften the tomatoes with another liquid of choice. They don't soak up oil by themselves, stay dry and are then unpleasant to eat. Margareta is still busy with her tomato mountain, which will be turned into sugo. Even in winter, the two don't want to forego the smell of their love apple or gold apple. For the sugo, you just use one type of tomato. The most important thing is that the fruit is very ripe, so it has a good and sweet taste. Cutting the tomato gives off a very intense smell, but it's even better when the sugo is heated. The whole kitchen is filled with it. I've heated these and now carefully put them in the sieve to drip dry. There are countless ways of preparing sugo. For Annette, preserving flavor is most important. This is just much quicker than reducing the sugo by cooking it. I find this tastes more tomatoey and fresher, and the color stays longer because it hasn't been cooked for ages. Annette is using her favorite manual grinder to do the work. Annette makes hers very pure, without any seasoning, very classic, which people can use for all dishes. I do it a little differently. I add peeled aubergine to the tomatoes, which makes it more creamy and thick. This amount of tomatoes has made about three liters of concentrated tomato sugo, and that's something very special. The walnuts come from their own tree. Annette is preparing the dish especially for Margarita because it's her friend's favorite. For walnut cream, the nuts are mixed with water, salt, and garlic. I've used the rest of the walnuts from last year. With walnuts, it's important to remove the walnuts you didn't eat in the winter from their shells and store them in an airtight container or freeze them. Then they don't go off. If you keep the nuts in the shells, it gets dangerous as moths and pests get in and they'll stop crawling in the late summer. In Austria, aubergines are called melanzani, and naturally, they come from Annette's garden. The best thing about growing them yourself is the flavor, and that they're not bitter. Benari's Blue Queen is the name of this old variety. I always gauge the temperature, feel it until it has the right temperature and then the oil can go on. The aubergine slices are slowly fried in the olive oil until they're evenly browned. The good thing about this dish is that it's quick and easy. You just need a little bit of patience to fry the aubergine, especially when you know that there are two hungry mouths out there waiting for food. It's important not to go over the point where the aubergines still have a little bit of chew. We're slowly getting hungry. Will the food be ready soon? Annette! Annette, when is the food ready? It's coming, it's coming. I just have to take two tomatoes. OK. Annette's favorite tomato, the black Indian, tastes particularly good with this dish, and the nutty filling is easily spread. 
Interestingly, you get a cream by just mixing the walnuts and the water. It's got the consistency of a thick mayonnaise. Aubergine with walnut cream on fresh tomatoes. And let's thank you to her friend and fellow tomato lover. Right, enough work. That looks good. Wow.